What is up guys, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're covering, you guessed it, some more r slash am I the butthole. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell too, as it all really helps out our channel. And don't forget you can follow us on podcast too now so you can take us wherever you go. And you can also support the channel either through YouTube membership or Patreon if you head on over there. Once again, guys, thank you all for being here. The time out of your day is truly, truly appreciated. And with that being said, let's get in to today's stories. Much love, guys. Our first story comes from Wish I Could Kill Stuff. It's not a concerning name, is it? <laughs> Am I the arsehole for being too sensitive for a guy? Ever since I've been young, my dad always goes out fishing and brings back bags of fish, still alive and struggling for oxygen. This makes me really sad. And as I've grown up and realized their pain, I now struggle to hold back the tears. My dad is a big strong man and has always told me that crying is for women and children under 12. But last week, he saw a tear roll down my cheek and he started shouting at me and said, does it upset you that I feed my family? Does it upset you that I spend my whole weekend to find you fish? I hope that tear fills you up because you're not welcome to a fish anymore. We've not spoken since this incident and my whole family are treating me different. I'm only 17, but in my country I am expected to be a man and not cry at all. Am I the arsehole for having empathy for a fish? Oh god, male masculinity, I can't believe we still have to talk about this these days, you know, it's just so crazy. When I was in my first school, I think it was around 7 or 8 years old, I was actually on the news crying when they were cutting some trees down to build new housing. <laughs> they were asking me about like, what do I think about the housing and stuff and I thought, and I just started blubbing alive on news. <laughs> I can't, I'm, not, I'm never going to show the clip. <laughs> and my concern was because they were cutting down like four of these trees that we're going to all lose our oxygen and die. <laughs> ah, good times. But my point is, you should always cry when you want to. It's a great stress reliever. And more recently with my dad, who's, you know, who's going, you all know he's going through um, mesolithioma. I think that's pronounced right, which is asbestos cancer. Um, not a good outcome, but you know, when he has tears and I've never seen him cry once in his life, but just recently when he's had tears and he always apologizes to me, he always says, I'm, I'm sorry, Mark. I, I'm sorry to be crying in front of you. And I'm just like, don't be sorry. You cry if you want to. And it kind of upsets me that he feels like he can't be himself in front of me. And it's just like, dude, just let your tears go. Just cry if you want to. Hell, I cry all the time. I cry at the stupidest stuff. <laughs> the other day, my niece told me she was getting married in December and I just started blubbing. I don't know where it came from. I'm a bit sensitive, oversensitive just lately. And I just started blubbing. And I was like, oh, I'm so happy for you. Great news for, for a change. Thank you. <laughs> so it's all good. You cry if you want to and you're not being too sensitive. You're being a normal human being. You do you. Don't worry about the others. But let's go down into the comments below to see what we can find. Pineapple1347 says, Not the arsehole, this fragile masculinity thing has got to go. Men are allowed to express their feelings. In fact, I encourage them to. Plus, crying is awesome, releases endorphins and makes you feel better. I love a good cry. <laughs> P. Solace says, Thank you, say it louder for the people in the back. I always encourage my boyfriend to cry when he needs to. It's normal. Women don't have a monopoly on crying and showing emotions. I'm always, happy is the wrong word, but I feel some sort of relief when my partner cries and I know he feels safe around me and strong enough to show his emotions. To me, it's a sign of strength. If you can show your emotions and men are definitely allowed to cry too. I love it and I hate this fragile slash toxic masculinity thing. Mike says, I agree, but there's more to it than just this. His father thinks he's ungrateful for his sacrifice. If he understood that his son isn't being judgmental or thinking he's a monster for killing fish and instead that he appreciates him and his hard work, then they might be able to come to a better understanding. You and I both understand him crying doesn't mean he doesn't admire and respect his dad, but does sound like OP needs to communicate this. OP's father is being just as sensitive as OP and has taken personal offence and sees the tears as an insult to his character. SP Doc replies to this saying, the father feels like he's ungrateful still comes from a place of ego and fragile masculinity though, especially when the underlying mindset is crying is for women. Mike replies to this saying, I agree with you, but you're looking at this from a macro level and OP needs to figure out how to approach his situation with his father in a way where everyone's feelings can be heard and appreciated. 
OP has done nothing wrong, not the arsehole, but extending this gift of empathy to the situation towards his father is a better approach than dismissing him. People act like fragile masculinity is a thing that a person needs to just get over, when in fact, it's not like a person can unlearn something that's been beaten into them their whole lives overnight that they aren't even aware exists in a community where everyone else feels the same way. That takes time and work and many tough conversations. There's some good points all around there, you know. So I'm going to turn it to you now for this one. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story one. Our next story comes from Birthday A-Hole. Am I the arse for spending my birthday by myself? It was my birthday yesterday and about a week ago my wife asked me what I wanted to do slash what to have our kids get me. 15 male, 13 female and 15 female. She gives them money and then they gift it to me. I told her that I didn't want to do anything for it and that the perfect birthday for me would be me being able to spend the entire day in my office not having anyone ask me to do anything for them. You see, this quarantine has been very hard on me because I'm not used to spending this much time with my family as I usually work long hour days at my office with a pretty long commute. So my wife does most of the homemaking. She's a stay at home mum. Because of working at home now and my kids are out of school, I've been overwhelmed. They're constantly asking me to do stuff and are overall annoying, right? So I thought I could just get one day to relax without them badgering me. My wife was taken back from my request and said that maybe we could do something small for my B-Day. I insisted that we do nothing for my birthday and that the best gift she could give me would be her handling all of the childcare that day. She told me, fine, whatever, in a snarky tone and I didn't respond. She was weird with me up to my birthday, but I just ignored since I didn't want to fight with her. Yesterday, my birthday, I told my kids thanks for saying happy birthday and told them to try not to speak with me for that day since I would be relaxing. They seemed fine with it and that was that. I went along and my day was absolutely amazing. No cake, no kids, no wife, just relaxing. I honestly needed it. The problem is now today, my wife has been upset slash bitchy with me and my kids have been basically ignoring me. It is honestly very immature in my opinion. I just want one day to relax for fuck's sake. Am I the asshole? Oh dear. Now this is a pretty sad story in itself. I mean, one of the lines that hit me was, the quarantine has been very hard on me, poor you, because I'm not used to spending this much time with my family as I usually work long hour days at my office. So you barely spend any time with your family anyway. The one time you're home for your birthday, you could be spending it with your kids and wife. You choose not to and you want to get away from them because they're becoming too much and overwhelming. Wow, man. And then the, this line, I'm, it just almost broke me this one where it said, I told my kids thanks for saying happy birthday and told them to try not to speak with me because I would be relaxing. I mean, fucking hell, man, come on. Seriously, this has got to be a troll. You can't be that blank. The one day they're trying to spend some time with you and make your day special for you. Your kids want to be around you and stuff. And this is what you do. You want to separate yourself from your whole family. It's just sort of like, why did you have a family to begin with if you just want to be away from them the whole time? It sounds like you enjoy being at work a lot more than being at home with your own family. It's meant to be the opposite way around, man. Work to live, not live to work. I mean, come on. Uh, let's go down in the comments and see what we can see. I hopefully, I really hope this is going to go the same way as I'm thinking. York Peppermint Paddy says, You're the arsehole. I was somewhat open to your request until this. And quotes, I told my kids thanks for saying happy birthday and told them to try not to speak with me for the day. Dude, you're a grown ass man and a father. Having a birthday doesn't entitle you to shun your children for an entire day. Naked Invigilators, Invigilator says, Do you understand what shun means? Clearly not. Asked to be left alone for a day is not shunning them. Lol. Also, if the mum's birthday wishes had been a day of solitude, would you call her an arsehole too? Lumberfan69 replies to this, Yes, of course we would, dude. Come on. Cameralized Apple also replies to this, Love when people absurdly try to claim the double standard when it's not a factor at all. Wanting time and personal space as a parent on your birthday? Not an arsehole. Explicitly telling your kids not to speak to you? Uh -huh. Arsehole. Huge arsehole. Gender entirely irrelevant. Also, his wife is a stay-at-home mum. He says he's completely overwhelmed by what she deals with every day, which is the needs of his children. He literally called them annoying for being all over him and wanting to spend time with him. Parenting is tough, but seriously, yikes. Since we're bringing the wife into this, sounds like mama deserves a day off too. Too true. 
Lumberfan69 also replies to this again saying, doesn't even sound like he's doing much as she has to care for the children now that he's stuck at home. No wonder she's pissed off that he's dumping the kids on her. Just to make sure that the commentator doesn't fly in again and be like, but what if this was the mum who dumped their kids on her husband? Yeah, the mum would be an arsehole still. <laughs> and for all you couples out there, what if your other half did this to you? How would you feel if they wanted to be alone and you had kids and he said, look, I don't want nothing to do with you for the rest of the day. I just want the day to myself. And of course, you have to take into consideration that he's at work most of the time anyway. So I'd love to know your thoughts on this. Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on the poll in the description for story two. And our next story is from Shirt Problems. Am I the arse if I get mad at my sister for not wanting me shirtless at her pool? My sister and her husband invited me over to their pool party for a little barbecue. I assumed it would just be me, her husband, my nephews and my parents. But turns out they also invited her husband's side of the family. When it was time to get in the pool, I changed into my swim trunks and removed my shirt. But my sister stopped me before I came out of their house and asked me to keep my shirt on because of my scars. She referred to scars from when I had my top chest surgery. I'm a trans guy, has started transitioning eight years ago and my surgery was four years ago. My scars have faded and they're pretty well hidden under my pecs. You'd have to look really close to even notice. I've been to their pool party many times and she's never said anything before, so I was surprised. Every other guy, including my dad, were all shirtless in the pool. When I asked what the problem was with my scars, she said she was uncomfortable with her in-laws knowing that I'm trans. My feelings were hurt, but I was mainly pissed. She said she didn't want her in-laws to look at her differently if they found out about me. She told me not to make a big deal and go with it. When she left, I went back inside to change because I wasn't going to go in the pool with a shirt on. I only had one I came wearing because I didn't expect her to ask me this. My mood was soured after that and I didn't want to be around her so I decided to leave. When I said bye to everyone, they were all confused as I was only there less than an hour. My dad pulled me aside and asked why I was leaving early. I told him to ask my sister and left. An hour later, my sister called me upset because she and my dad got into a fight. My parents were furious about what she told me and they ended up leaving early too. Now she's angry at me for ruining the barbecue and said I didn't have to cause all this drama if only I did what she asked. What she said hurt me and I was no longer in a mood to be around her or anyone else, but I didn't mean for all that to happen. I'm either the arse for getting mad at her and basically ruining their day. When the sister said something like, she didn't want her in-laws to look at her differently. What does it make it jump out to you as it's sort of what I what I initially thought there was like she's ashamed to have a, a trans brother. That 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 pretty much just said it all to me that the sister is a huge asshole in this situation. And how no, OP isn't the asshole in this situation. There's a lot of good comments below, which I've learned a few things from myself. So we're gonna go straight down into the comments to see what we can find. Yara says, not the arsehole, no way. Showing your scars and explaining why you have them on the spot would have been much easier for everyone. Your sister ruined her own barbecue. I bet her in-laws have many questions in their minds now too. OP replies to this saying, I mean, unless they stared right at my chest at a real close proximity, like standing at least a few inches in front of me, they'd barely be able to notice. So it's not like I would have had to do a whole coming out speech in front of everyone. I don't know why to her, it would seem like it would be obvious. Snacks JPEG replies, it shouldn't matter whether they can see your scars anyway. Your right to exist as a trans man is more important than their feelings, always. So true. Verity Fox replies to this, not the arsehole. You are right to call out that transphobic behavior. Didn't want their in-laws to look at her differently. Makes it sound like she was ashamed to have a trans brother. I'm glad your parents stood up for you though. That was awesome to them. That was so awesome. You know, in these stories, like we hear stories where the parents are against the trans person. So to see them backing it up, it's just like, it's like a breath of fresh air, you know? It's like, thank goodness. <laughs> Smart people. <laughs> OP replies to this saying, I'm kind of glad too. They were really accepting soon as I told them, like my dad was excited to have a son, lol. They're normally chill, even during a conflict. So for them to react this way, they would have been really pissed. Verity Fox replies again saying, There you go then. If your parents reacted that strongly to it, seems a clear indicator they are also thought she was the arsehole. NJ2CA Throwaway says, Not the arsehole. I have several female to male friends and former students. Getting to go shirtless at a pool or at the beach is like a rite of passage. It means you feel comfortable that you are passing. I guess you could call it a rite of passing then. I can imagine how deeply it hurt you, both that your sister wasn't supportive and frankly overjoyed, that you feel good about going shirtless and that she is obviously ashamed of who you are. You were right to leave and I almost cheered out loud when I read that your parents left too. 
in solidarity with you. <laughs> Opie replies to this, Rite of passing. I love that. I mean, it basically is. It's become such a norm for me. When I go out for a run, the beach or a pool, I'm almost always shirtless. And fair play to you. Flex away, my friend. <laughs> What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story three. Our next story is from Eloquor1. Would I be the asshole if I tried to stop my nephew being in my daughter's class? I live in the UK. My sister is currently trying to transfer her children to the same school as mine. My issue with this is her eight year old George. He's in the same academic year as my daughter. The problem I have is that George is awful. My sister does not believe in discipline at all and her boys are awful. George is by far the worst though. If my sister tells him not to do something, he tells her to fuck off or hits her and she laughs and lets him continue to do as he pleases. I've heard him tell his dad to stop being a bitch when his dad tries to discipline him. George thinks that my daughter is his at family events or park outings. We have a few of the same friends. My daughter is not allowed to interact with anybody other than George. If she plays with anyone else, he screams, cries, hits my sister, swears at everyone, that type of behavior. Obviously, I don't stand for it and I tell George that my daughter can play with whoever she wants to. My girl is so sweet though, that if George cries, she gets upset thinking it's her fault, so she does what he wants. I very rarely attend family events now due to this and make excuses to avoid any gatherings with them. I only see my sister one on one if I can help it, then George can have my daughter to himself and there's no drama. She's happy to play with him and likes playing with him, one on one is fine, but in a group she likes to play with everybody and George won't allow that. If my sister is successful in getting their children transferred to our school, George is in the same academic year as my daughter. There are two classrooms per year group so there's a 50% chance he will end up in her class, but I feel she may contact the school to request they are together. If this happens, the rest of my daughter's time at primary school will be ruined. George will not allow her to play with her own friends. He will disrupt the class and disrupt my daughter. The school itself doesn't choose whether or not to allow a transfer. That is up to the council. But would I be the asshole if I asked to hold a secret meeting with the head before school ends for summer next week? Outline my concerns and ask him if my sister is successful in the transfer. Could he please make sure George is not in my daughter's class? My sister is not one of those people you can talk to about things. She takes everything seriously and loves to cause drama. So I'd rather not have to discuss this with her and just go straight to the teacher now before school ends. Rather than go back to school come September and find out the transfer was successful and George has been placed in my daughter's class. I need to make an edit as I'm getting grief for not cutting contact. I have cut contact. We see my sister and her kids maybe twice a year for a short amount of time. That worked out just fine, but now they're possibly moving to our school and I need help figuring out what to do. Edit two, he's never hit my daughter. He hits his mother. Wow, yes, I would say totally agree to not have them in the same classes. And not only for your benefit, it will work out in the teacher's benefit as well. And they will definitely take that into consideration. I know for a fact, like from teacher friends, obviously, that they try to keep like siblings separated as possible because they know it can cause like it can cause issues in the classroom so they they like to do that anyway it's much like if you're if you're a teacher and you've got one of your own kids in the school they're, they're trying not to have that kid go into your class for obvious reasons so they try to avoid it where possible so i think just outlining all these concerns to the head and then it'll get filtered down to the teachers would be a good thing so um not only in the classroom but when they go out in playtime or whatever they call it now recess i think they call it in the us they can look out for that too because you obviously you don't want this George pulling your daughter away from her friends that she's already established in the school and ruining those relationships further down the line. But let's go down to the comments to see what we can find. Perkle one says, not the arsehole, you're looking out for your daughter. Concern though, is even if they don't share the same classroom, would they share the same lunch period and recess? Lunch period, that's the one. <laughs> Eloquor one says, ah oh man, I hadn't considered that. I was so concerned with him disrupting her in class. I hadn't thought about lunch break, etc." Yes, they share a playground. Awesome. I Spy one says, oh no, talk to your daughter and tell her she is still to play with her friends, even if George doesn't like it. If he cries and screams, no one's going to care like your sister does. He's only going to get into trouble. Remind your daughter that she needs to maintain her friendships. I just feel so bad for the girl. She's in a really tough spot. OP then replies again saying, she will be. I've seen how this plays out. I know she will do what he wants to stop him being upset. Hopefully the transfer won't go through. And now I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to vote on that poll in the description. 
for story four. And our final story comes from Apprehensive Lime 689. Am I the arsehole for telling my son's girlfriend that she is stupid? I have two children. My daughter has a five-year-old daughter. And my son's girlfriend is pregnant with their first child. I've always got the impression that she doesn't like me, but that's fine. I don't particularly like her either, but we're civil for my son's sake. I'm Brazilian, I grew up in Brazil, and I go back once or twice a year to visit family. I had both of my children overnight last night, and I mentioned that when it's safe to travel, I will be taking my granddaughter to Brazil for the first time. My son's girlfriend said that she doesn't want her child going with me in the future, which is fine. Her hypothetical child was never invited. Then she said she doesn't want her child exposed to that culture. I asked what she meant by that, and she said she's worried about her daughter, she doesn't know what she is having yet, growing up and having my culture, because I've had multiple plastic surgeries, my daughter got a boo job for graduation gift, and I'm vain. Brazil does have a reputation for being a plastic surgery capital of the world, but it's not like I'm taking the five-year-old there to get a consultation. It is also a beautiful country with a culture that goes beyond plastic surgery. I told her she is incredibly stupid, borderline racist, and she doesn't have to worry about being taken on any trips. My husband said maybe we should take her and get something done about her chin. I did tell him that was an asshole thing to say. My son now wants me to apologise for calling her stupid. It's just one of those ones where you read it and you think, fucking hell. That family. <laughs> insulting each other constantly. They're insulting each other's culture and stuff. Oh god, and they all hate each other. <laughs> I don't have too much to say about this one apart from they all sound like pretty awful people to be quite honest <laughs> so we're gonna go straight down to the comments below to see what we can see goofberry says everyone sucks here but especially to whoever made the comment about the chin surgery you'll need to sit in a circle and practice saying nice things to each other for fuck's sake is <laughs> mize and arsehole says everyone sucks here you both sound insufferable maybe avoid each other she could have kept her opinion to herself or found a nice way of phrasing it you sound like you were waiting for a reason to hate her more you already plan on not including your second grandchild, even so much as calling them a child, and quotes, hypothetical. Then says, she's pregnant. The child isn't anyway hypothetical. They're a given. Lily Muscovitz says, everyone sucks here. You're the arse of a calling her stupid, etc. And she sucks for only seeing the stereotype. Her child isn't hypothetical. She's pregnant. Magstar222 says, everyone sucks here. This whole post is a solid 30 second cringe. <laughs> or a minute for a slow readers. Redacted from that security says, everyone sucks here and you should definitely apologise for the stupid comment, but feel free to politely call her out on her racism. Something like, I should not have called you stupid, but you were insulting me and my culture. There is so much more to Brazil than plastic surgery, and I hope you take the time to learn about it since it's your baby's culture too. <laughs> so once again, I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Would you want to be a part of that family? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story 5. As always guys, if you did enjoy today's video, there's another one on your screen right now as I speak. Watch it as it helps the channel and hopefully you'll get something out of it too. And don't forget, thank you so so much for the time out of your day. You know, it really blows my mind still. Thank you so so much and I will see you in the next one. Take care guys, much love to you.